good. All right. Hello, Natalie. I'm going to be asking your interview questions today. So uh, your first question is going to be, what do you think are the major features that influence trends in fashion in the textile industry? Um, well, I think a lot of things influence things in fashion, but specifically when it comes to textiles, I would say it's seasons. So like, for example, right now it's winter, so we'll, they'll bring out corduroy and stuff like that. In the spring, it'll be the pastels, and then summers, it'll be like the whites and like the distressed denim. So yeah, I think it's seasons when it comes to textiles. Good observation. Uh, so what's the best way uh, to motivate employees, you think, in the fashion business? Um, I think like in any industry, not even just fashion, um, in any company, it's important to motivate your employees based off of like rewards and benefits. It's just, it's just how you show them that they're validated, that you, that you know that what they're doing is important and appreciated. Uh, what do you think is the most important leadership trait or quality for a manager? For a manager specifically, I think confidence, just because employees see that and they take note in that. And when they see a manager that's not confident in what they're preaching or what they're, what they're trying to teach, um, it kind of gives employees a sense of just not confidence in the manager since they don't have confidence in themselves. Um, what are the distinguishing characteristics of a luxury brand, you would say? Uh, luxury brands, I would say characteristics, price for sure, but now luxury brands try to do like exclusivity. So like they do, they only drop like a certain number of that one product or that one style. And luxury, it's just the whole point I think to me is it's not attainable to everybody. So I think that's the major quality. Uh, what is the most important business aspect you would focus on? Um, to improve uh, business competitiveness. competitiveness. Business competitiveness, I think focusing on merchandising, so like focusing not only on what's selling in your store, but what's selling everywhere else, like the trends. So being very purposeful with what you put in your store, not just kind of putting whatever product in your store to fill the store up, but making sure that customers are going in there for a reason for the products that you specifically have in there. And how do you think your previous experience will help our company? When it comes to my previous experience, I have a good amount of managerial experience. So the obvious leadership skills that I already feel I, I've attained through those manager jobs. But in addition, uh, more specifically, like um, training techniques and um, learning from the different manager jobs that I have in different roles, um, how training can be different for every single person because every one of us is different and so a lot of companies make the mistake of making one training um, program for everybody and not realizing that that just doesn't work for everybody because we're all different so yeah for sure yeah it's important managing uh what is the value of teamwork uh, you think in the fashion industry Again, like in industry, any industry, uh, teamwork is crucial, but specifically in the fashion industry, I would say what comes to mind is just the fact that it's like a cycle, um, when it, whether it's like the people that work in textiles and, and picking the fabrics to the people in the store selling the fabrics to the people modeling the clothes. It's, it's all this cycle, and so the whole industry is kind of like the team working together. Yeah, and going off of that, uh, what part do customers play in the success of a brand? Uh, customers are just basically the people that go out there and tell everybody that your brand or your company is awesome. So customer service um, is always crucial because they're the ones that come back to keep buying your stuff. So that's the role that they play. Um, okay, and lastly, what do you think are some reasons fashion companies tend to go out of business sooner than others? Um, I think that goes hand in hand with the customer service part. I think a lot of, especially luxury companies, think that because they have such a quality product and elite exclusive product that they can get away with not producing as much as like quality customer service. And also in addition to that, a lot of companies don't aren't so innovative, so like they don't stay on top of the new trends. I know that sounds funny, but like keeping up with the trends is important in fashion and, and a lot of a lot of companies like being comfortable and staying with what they know.
Okay. Awesome. Thank you. That's good. Okay, that was all ten. <laughs> all right. Let's see. Let's see here. All right. Number one. Please explain how your military experience is an advantage for this position and how your qualifications make you stand out. Um, so I think um, that very confusing transition veterans go through after they get out, um, being that only 1% actually serves in the military, I think having that firsthand uh, experience um, is really kind of closes that gap in the knowledge and understanding of what a student veteran is actually going through once they come out. And I think actually being a student veteran and then working at a student veteran resource center um, kind of really opened my eyes to all the issues that students are facing or obstacles or different barriers. And I think that gave me a huge insight and it really helped out. Um, um, how would you work to maximize recruitment, retention, and graduation of veterans? Ooh. I think for recruitment, um, it'd be important to highlight what Whittier College is actually going to be doing for the student veteran. Um, maybe hold some sort of like seminars or student panels where past and, and present students um, are actually answering questions. Um, and that way, Whittier College is actually really showcasing what they're offering um, the student veteran. A lot of the times colleges just say, we have a VRC. And, there's really no presence. There's a couple. Um, so I think that would really help um, maybe uh, as far as like re for graduation and retention, hold um, monthly uh, like town hall meetings, maybe highlight some of the uh, successes of student veterans and even like network with other uh, college graduates from Whittier. So. Okay. So jumping off of that, um, how would you like help develop engagement like among the veterans in the college? Um, well, I think veterans or military, they're kind of like a family already. already so I think, yeah. I think piggybacking off of that would be really important. Uh, maybe holding the uh, events um, specific to like, you know, Veterans Day, Memorial Day, and really, um, um, really jumping on the fact that we are, that there's that bond that we all shared. We all had similar experiences. And I think once you create that, um, and then you have a good, uh, like, a uh, student veteran uh, maybe club or a society um i think that i think that the student veterans will have an impact uh, on the campus as a whole and they'll start engaging the whole campus um and yeah i think that'll really help and they'll kind of start advocating for student veterans and other um underrepresented you know groups got it okay so describe a time when your communication skills have proved to overcome an issue um, well, one that stands out in the military, I had to um, counsel a peer. We were the same rank, but I was in a leadership role. We were friends, and I thought it was going to be a really difficult um, counseling, but it actually wasn't because I was just able to kind of focus on communicate the facts um, and articulate that this was um, just, you know, he broke a rule, and we're all accountable, and we're all part of one big team. And when you break the rule, that means you let others down. So this is going to be, you know, your punishment for your misconduct and really just kind of communicate it that way instead of getting stuff confused. And so yeah, that really helps. Um, how do you remain unbiased when trying to lead or advise others on their future? Uh, I think there it's just important to remain objective. Um, and also recognizing that each student is going to be different. Every case is going to be different. Um, I think paying attention to what their goals are and their motivations and listening to them and what skills they have to actually back, you know, up their goals and just try and be some sort of roadmap um, to those goals and just be there for support, not really um, not get so wrapped up uh, in emotions or like their personal life. It's just, based off your goals, skills, and yeah, your motivations. Okay. Um, and then what, like, any specific that made you interested in this particular role? Like, any event that made you interested in this role? Um, I think just going back to school myself and then working at ELAC, uh, the, at the Veterans Resource Center, and noticing how we all just had similar experiences in the military, and that transferred over to coming back to school. 
and we all had, you know, obstacles, picking classes, um, registering, even down to that, you know, hey, how'd you register? How'd you do it? Oh, I, I got confused. I got lost here. Can you help me? Mm-hmm. And just realizing how it really was one big family and even extended to friends and stuff. And I think it kind of really grew into a passion of like helping out the student veteran. And yeah, I would love to help out with your college student veterans. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what would you do if a student or veteran came to you with a personal problem not related to the program? Uh, I think it'd be important to, first and foremost, make sure they're safe. Uh, They're not going to harm themselves or others. Um, And then just listen. Um, Listen to them. Um, And then from there, kind of provide uh, any support that Whittier College can and then also outside of that there's a lot of veterans affairs um organizations and many 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 supportive services so i would kind of point them in that direction and then just follow up follow up maybe even um bring that to like dean of student life you know share as long as it isn't anything too personal i would make sure that that student um is okay Um, Can you describe leadership qualities which stand out to you in order to build stronger individuals? Yes, so I think in this role in particular, uh, resilience would be important, Uh, a vision, definitely positivity because things aren't going to change overnight. And I think in this role, it seems like I'm going to have to um, create or have some sort of impact and really lead, you know, a, a leader is going to motivate and inspire. And I think you have to bring that positivity. You have to have a clear vision and just know that there's always going to be work and you have to be resilient and you can't just give up on something. Okay. Um, let's see. And then how would your work be affected, if at all, if you found out you were working with someone difficult, like someone on the faculty? Uh, I would like to say would not be affected. Not my work, at least. Uh, There's definitely that separation. Um, at the end of the day, we're focused on the students and their success. And if there is a difficult uh, faculty member, I would imagine Whittier College does have you know procedures, and I would follow those, and hopefully the those issues can be resolved. And then at the end of the day, focus on the student. And then lastly, super simple. Um, the job is part time, so are you? Does that fit into your schedule? Are you comfortable with that? Uh, Yes, I think that's actually um, a little bit more beneficial. Like I said, I work closely with the ELAC VRC, and I think that would actually give me some more time to still uh, help out there and even maybe take on a project where we would do some collaboration or information sharing and help the student veterans. Sounds good. That was it.